All right, we're here we go. All right, so uh, I'm Rob Bennett with uh, a small fledgling nonprofit called Eco Districts. We're based in Portland, Oregon, uh, but we've got a big vision around accelerating uh, what we call district scale sustainable development. Um, as Bob mentioned, I've had a career uh, at the intersection of public policy and real estate, uh, working for cities, working for nonprofits. Primarily, I come from the green building uh, world and uh, helped participate. I've been participating in the, the market transformation of green buildings now for uh, for over 16 years. I think we have the same opportunity to do this at the neighborhood scale. So what I'm going to talk about is is not just sort of projects, uh, you know, in the typical here's the project, here's the sort of uh, the conditions, and here's what we did. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, the market making for this um, and some things that we're doing in our organization. Of course, our name is Eco Districts, uh, so you would imagine we care deeply and think that neighborhoods and districts are the building blocks of sustainable cities. I, I don't think many of us argue in this room about that. Uh, they determine sort of the quality of life we have or don't have. It's where we raise our children. It's it's where we um, uh, do our business. It's ultimately uh, very important to the health and well-being of ourselves and our communities uh, that, our, that our neighborhoods are strong and healthy. Um, this is some information that Elliot Allen provided to me. I don't know how many of you know Elliot, but he was the consultant to uh, the U.S. Green Building Council on Lead ND, and of course CNU is uh, one of the major, major engines uh, for building the Lead ND system. And what this is showing, and what what Elliot is trying to relay here, is a tremendous market opportunity for neighborhood scale sustainability that's going missed. There's there's only a small handful of Lead ND projects certified. Um, and in the pipeline, uh, but there's a tremendous market. According to Elliot, there's over 500,000 multi, uh, multi building projects uh, entitled every year in this country. Uh, there's over 173,000 um, di uh, distinct neighborhoods in this country, in, in our cities, uh, uh, small and large. So if you take, uh, the, take the sort of curve of, of adoption that's been used in many markets, you can imagine even 2% of that uh, adds up to thousands and thousands of potentially entitled uh, uh, district projects where there's a real intention around sustainability and a way to document success. So I share this as, a, as I think the large opportunity that's in front of us in recognizing something's going on in the marketplace that isn't allowing us to unleash uh, the opportunity uh, with these projects. Um, so some things we've been hearing the last two years as we've gotten the organization up and running is one, there's a huge appetite for district scale sustainability. If you Google eco districts, you'll come up with thousands of, of entries. There's tons of projects that are calling themselves eco districts. There's a lot of neighborhoods that have got sustainability uh, in, the, in the work and a lot of consultants, planners um, and developers are actively working on projects uh, from the from the beginning, sort of master planning stages up through uh, execution. Um, we think, though, that with this appetite, there has been an overemphasis on uh, tool development as a way to unleash the market. So there's a lot of great tools. There's Envision, there's Lead ND, there's obviously Lead for Buildings, um, there's Sites, uh, uh, there's now Star for Cities. There's a lot of tools out there. There's a lot of best practice manuals, um, but there's a lack of a coherent uh, public policy agenda. Uh, there is a real lack of, of early stage financing to get some of the more aggressive sustainability cooked into master planning and neighborhood planning, meaning that we leave a lot out. Um, and uh, there are a lack of, uh, of uh, standards around what are the key metrics uh, for success. If you look at Lead ND, it's a lot of uh, prescriptive strategy at the tail end, um, and there's a lot of uh, sort of emergent upfront metrics, One Planet Living, uh, 2030 districts that are really trying to push up the upstream around what the performance we want to meet. So there's a lot of work, I think, to try to get some level of continuity around this. Uh, and then finally, the, the, the sustainable market neighborhood marketplace, the intermediaries, the certifiers, we're all very fractured. And our theory of change is we got to bring ourselves together. Again, I take a page from an industry I know well, the green building movement. They coalesced around a big idea, which is let's transform the market and then they went about doing it in a pretty systematic way. We're much more fractured, I think, in the neighborhood space. There's organizations like uh, CNU and, and uh, the GBCs, NRDC, Enterprise, over $2 billion in assets that are doing very important work at the district scale. Um, there's a lot of certifications and probably more to come. Uh, Living Communities was launched in, in Portland just last week with the International Living Futures Institute. Um, there's no, seems there's no shortage of those who want to do um, that kind of work. So 
our our approach to this is to really to do a couple of things. One is to create a call of action. And what I mean by this is build a coalition of organizations and change makers who feel that feel strongly that we need to build a, a neighborhood, a district scale uh, marketplace um, and have a very simple mission and, and a vision and have a very strong brand associated with it. Um, we need this, I think, to start to send the signals that there's some continuity and some uh, collaboration that uh, is needed in order to move this forward. Second, we need to build a marketplace. Um, and we see two things that are needed. One, we need a pipeline of Austin projects, but we also need some continuity around the standards of what exemplar success looks like. Um, and uh, we have a particular belief, and you'll see it in the, in the last few minutes I share with some of the case studies from Portland, that it's, it's really about process. It's, it's less about certifying awesome end product. It's about the process of delivering and optimizing and improving our neighborhoods over time. So we take a page out of the corporate sustainability world and metrics and, and approaches more so than we do out of the certification world. So let me tell you a few stories about a pilot program in Portland, and, and it'll, it'll sort of identify um, our approach that we think is needed to sort of accelerate the market. Um, Bob mentioned Portland is well known for its sustainability, uh, but I have to say I've been there for 22 years. I've been practicing uh, sustainability. It's a provincial city. It has a lot of challenges to financing. There's no secret sauce to Portland that's, that's uh, any different, frankly, than I think cities like Buffalo or others. Um, there is an intention to planning. There has been a, um, a very strong planning uh, framework built in regionally and locally that allows buildings and districts work to happen, I think, more coherently. But when you get right down to it, it's still a struggle to uh, get the attention of the policymakers and planners to do this work. Uh, we built a uh, quote-unquote eco-districts pilot in Portland uh, with our former mayor, Mayor Adams, in 2008-9. He was elected in 2008. Um, our organization uh, was launched in uh, the summer of 2009. And his goal, which I thought was really important, was to do three things. One was to create an innovation strategy that linked neighborhood economic development with clean tech and placemaking. So he saw the ability to move on eco districts less around exclusively around you know livable neighborhoods and, and placemaking and more about economic development innovation um, and new partnerships uh, second we wanted to develop a, a pilot program that really focused on community benefits uh, equity and job creation of course this was when the economy was tanking so it was a really important priority that uh, all cities uh, uh, we were facing and then third, and we think probably most important, is make sure it's built around sticky and robust governance, meaning that those who are doing the projects, we can't just simply focus on the development teams uh, that are executing uh, the entitlements, ultimately the design and execution of projects, but there's a whole other set of organizations in the marketplace that delivering benefits at the community, and we better build uh, a, a model of governance and legal structures so that we can take advantage of those other investors uh, and to come into some common uh, framework uh, using a collective impact strategy to do projects. So those are the goals. Um, we went about it in two ways. One, we decided we needed a citywide strategy. In essence, to contextualize pilot program, you need to say some very simple things uh, at, the, at the municipal level. What is the role that neighborhoods play and how important is it as, as far as building out a public policy agenda? So the city was uh, moving through its comprehensive plan, the first update of its comp plan since the late 80s. Uh, they took a, an approach uh, which many cities are taking uh, around a 20, building 20 minute neighborhoods. So they started out with a strategy that every neighborhood mattered, every neighborhood needed to be robust and vibrant. Um, and we wanted to identify kind of where the uh, the weak, uh, the sort of the, the, the underperforming neighborhoods are and where the overperforming neighborhoods are and develop a, 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 a broad strategy with the cities, agencies, uh, with Portland State University and other partners. And then we went about doing five neighborhood pilots. The idea was to build awareness, develop strategy, accelerate projects, ultimately supporting a public policy agenda that can scale. And we felt very, uh, very uh, uh, strongly that success would require a new integrated delivery model. Um, we couldn't rely on the same tax increment financing approaches of the Portland Development Commission exclusively or the planning department's policy and entitlement strategies. Uh, we had to think about 
delivering a set of projects in a different way that, again, took advantage of other investors and other uh, energy spots. So we built a framework for this, and this is, the, this is really the engine room for our organization that we're now uh, spending the next year and would love as many of you who like to, to participate with us to build this into what we're calling a quote unquote global protocol. The idea is to really develop a, a very clear uh, sort of operating manual for what success looks like around process. So it includes performance areas. We have eight of them um, in the areas of equitable development, energy, water, uh, things you would sort of uh, uh, think matter. What, what's important around the performance areas is they're typology neutral, they're performance based, and uh, in theory, uh, we should be, when well, I shouldn't practice, we should be able to do sustainability in an industrial neighborhood as easily or as effectively as we can in a mixed use, high density neighborhood. There's the ability to execute on different typologies because uh, every city has different typologies. Um, the answer is not always uh, high density mixed use uh, uh, neighborhoods. And then we have a four step methodology of embedding, thank you, embedding um, a very rigorous sort of process management into the effort. So we built this for the pilot program. We then worked with the city, and you can see this heat map here. This was the city's planning and sustainability department's uh, uh, analysis on the sort of quality uh, and functionality of neighborhoods. So they took a series of data points um, around connectivity of neighborhoods, around walkability, um, around key sites like schools and grocery stores that uh, created uh, uh, you know, sort of the core services that make up neighborhoods, parks, uh, transit, um, headway. And they, in essence, uh, created a very simple typology around sort of quality and functionality of the neighborhoods. From that, we looked at selecting five neighborhoods, all quite different from a typology perspective, uh, low income, low density, uh, particularly in the outer sort of inner uh, outer uh, suburbs um, of, of Portland uh, to the high density neighborhoods of South Waterfront, which is a 500, 300 acre brownfield site. Uh, Portland State University um, urban uh, campus and the Lloyd District, which is a secondary serving commercial district with a lot of uh, surface parking lots, super block, pretty, uh, pretty dysfunctional neighborhood from a placemaking and a mixed use perspective, but a lot of investments in transit over the years. So we took an approach which was really a pilot uh, neighborhood approach with this context of building a, a broader framework, as I mentioned, around 20 minute neighborhoods. We think this is important, and we, we really encourage cities to do this kind of work because it's it's functionally about creating marketplace and not just sort of saying, hey, we just hope the land gets, you know, the, the market will sort of pick up and do projects, you know, as developers, uh, you know, assemble large enough lots and the, you know, the market conditions are there. There's a lot we can do uh, to, prime the, the, to, pump the, to prime the pump. So just a couple projects just to highlight to finish. So the Lloyd Eco District. This is Sarah Mensa, the former COO of the Portland Trailblazers. This is a neighborhood in which 10 major property owners came together to build their eco district. The strategy in Lloyd is one of infill and one of, uh, of program delivery, if you will, around behavior. They've been a business improvement district for many years. Uh, they're a very business uh, focused district. Um, their idea of sustainability is focused on being competitive in the marketplace as a secondary commercial center in Portland. Um, and they've got some very interesting mix of, 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 uh, of partners. They've got Kaiser Permanente's Northwest headquarters. They've got Pacific Corps, our le largest electric utility headquartered here. They have the Tra Portland Trailblazers, Metro government, state, uh, state agencies, um, and the, pri the largest private developer in the city has a, a series of assets in this neighborhood. They helped to hire the first eco districts um, uh, uh, executive director, and then ultimately have built a nonprofit uh, to execute. This is them doing this, and now they're out in front of the city from a policymaking perspective. They've adopted the 2030 challenge uh, uh, and are asking the private developers that come into the neighborhood uh, to meet much more rigorous uh, carbon emissions. They've got a waste strategy and energy strategy around district energy and, and building retrofits being driven by the business community in this district. And finally, after years of, of limited development in the neighborhood, they have their first major um, mixed use project. This is uh, Haslo and Eighth. It's a three block uh, project. It's in the middle of a super block that's been a contiguous parking lot. So it's uh, roughly, um, uh, roughly uh, 900,000 square feet of mixed use commercial, residential, and, and retail in the heart of the neighborhood. 
um, it is healing a super block, so it's creating you know, two new streets that are pedestrian focused, uh, emphasizing green infrastructure and water waste, wastewater uh, treatment. It's a beautiful project. Um, it's about $700 uh, $700 million. So it's a it's really injecting a lot of life. And their contribution to the overall eco district is primarily focused on a, a couple things. One is green infrastructure and wastewater, and I, I don't have a lot of time to go into it, so I'll just leave it at that. But uh, they are saving uh, 60,000 gallons um, in in wastewater going into the system. They're reusing it uh, for toilet flushing. It's part of the public realm, um, and they've got 1,200 bike uh, slots or bike. Uh, uh, parking, which is the largest bike parking um, center uh, in the in the state of Oregon in the history of the city. So uh, a lot of attention on the infrastructure. Uh, finally, I'll wrap with the South Waterfront. And what I'll get to with South Waterfront, it's a 300-acre site. It's been under development for about 20 years. Uh, really, the development, the first phase of development uh, happened over the last 10 years. Part of that site, which you can see there between the two bridges, is 50 acres owned by Oregon Health Sciences University and Zydell, which is a large boat builder, family owned. They're redeveloping it to about 7 million square feet. But what we did here, and it's really part of the whole Eco District's approach, is create a partnership around new, uh, uh, new initiatives. And, and in this case, we partnered with the Clinton Foundation in the, uh, in the CCI, I'm sorry, in the, um, the C40. Uh, one of 18 projects around the world that's uh, dedicated to reducing carbon emissions to zero in this neighborhood. The city has is, is the only uh, the city of Portland has the longest standing carbon action plan of any city in the country. But this is the first project where they were trying to drive down and understand emission reduction at the neighborhood scale, and we're doing it in partnership with a global initiative. Um, what we're finding is it's very difficult to get the carbon emissions. We can basically, we think, get about 30% of the carbon emissions uh, dealt with with infrastructure and buildings, um, and the rest is going and, and transportation, and the rest is going to have to come from very clever um, uh, schemes off-site and obviously decarbonizing our electric uh, and transportation fuel uh, system. So um, that was a very quick tour. Uh, What's next for us? We're building a series of programs, a national uh, North America pilot program that we're going to launch in the Clinton Global Initiative in two weeks. We have a summit and an incubator program. Happy to talk to you about uh, how you could fit into that. And then we have our conference in D.C. this year at the end of September. Um, it's all about district scale sustainability. So projects, strategy, tools, leadership. Uh, and I hope you join us. Thanks very much. So I'm, I'm really pleased to say that our colleagues from Dublin have made it. Press escape. Press escape. Yeah, sure. Okay.